Uh, let, let's move along here. We're going to take a closer look at cert, uh, tactics. And I actually meant to put the word tactics there in inverted commas because uh, I find it very hard to believe that some of the tactics we've seen used there by um, the uh, critical incident response team are in the training manual or our proper uh, protocol. So uh, first of all, the, the photo credit there is to Jason Edwards. So you can go and uh, look up Jason Edwards on Twitter. He is a professional photographer and has really been conducting some, uh, some really incredible work at these protests, uh, specifically photographing police. But anyway, um, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of these so-called questionable tactics. All right, so number one, using firearms as a blunt weapon. Okay, so in the footage I'm about to show you uh, appears to be a member of a CERT using the butt of his firearm to strike a man once he is already on the ground. I'm going to show you the footage. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I, I hardly think that a man on the ground uh, is, is, is posing a type of threat that justifies being smashed with the butt of a, of a rifle or whatever that weapon was. So uh, I'd like to just put that question out into the universe. What do you think this is? Is, is this, in your opinion, an, an abuse of force, an abuse of power? Is it misconduct? Should the individual striking the man on the ground be uh, prosecuted criminally? Put your thoughts in the comments. So get it out to the world, guys. This has to be seen. It just absolutely has to be seen and it cannot be ignored. All right, uh, number two, downward knees. Okay, so uh, in the footage, what you're about to see is a man on the ground being arrested and out of nowhere, a, an officer from search just charges in and launches a what appears to be like a lunging downward knee to a man that's already on the ground. It's a very, very dangerous thing to do to somebody. So I'm going to show you that right now. Yeah, so I, I mean, from a common common sense perspective, I really can't understand why you do that for any other reason outside of inflicting more harm than what needs to be inflicted. I was under the impression that police are supposed to use force uh, proportionate to the threat that they're facing. So to, to, to throw a knee like that to a man that's already on the ground uh, it seems completely unnecessary, but it also appears extremely dangerous. It reminds me of a move that you might see in mixed martial arts, like a, um, a, a sporting competition such as UFC. You see these these types of moves, and uh, when you when you look at the officer's footwork, it appears to be quite reminiscent of M an MMA fighter. Of course, the, the difference being in MMA, it's a professional sport, and it's between two consenting adults that sign on the dotted line. And, and voluntarily sign themselves up to taking part in that type of competition. Now, I've got a little uh, clip here from a mixed martial arts fight that uh, really reminds me of the, the move that was carried out by that particular officer. Have a look at this. 13 second turns. Throws a knee to it, the down opponent and just knocks him cold. Yeah, so as you can see, it's a very, very dangerous move. You've got the full body weight of a, of a fully grown man uh, coming downwards and, and the knee, of course, just slamming into somebody. As you saw in that mixed martial arts fight, the opponent was knocked out cold and and, uh, and of course, that's a sporting competition and you expect to see that sort of thing in mixed martial arts. So this, I mean, this, this bloke that's charged, this, this cert guy, uh, I'm not sure why he doesn't just sign up to mixed martial arts and go and compete. If he wants to be throwing moves like that, I hardly think that uh, the, the police force is a place to do it, especially on civilians that are already on the ground. So yeah, I found that particularly disturbing. 
And then there's this here, shooting people as they run away. We saw these scenes at the, at the shrine. The, the, the crowd had uh, been dispersed. They were on their way out. And for the life of me, I can't understand the logic behind uh, these, these men in uniform raising their weapons and shooting at people that are already running off. I mean, um, self-defense is ultimately defined as uh, taking measures to neutralize some sort of attack. But once the attack has been, an incoming attack, I should say, but once the attack has been neutralized and there's no longer a threat, any further infliction of physical harm is not considered self-defense. It's considered assault. So just based on, based on the scenes here, I, I, for the life of me, can't uh, understand how this type of thing is anything but assault. I'm going to play this one for you as well. So, I mean, you got to ask yourself the question and I, I don't care what side of the COVID fence you sit on. I don't care if you absolutely love the chief health officer's directions and you jump up and down for joy every time a new lockdown's announced. Every Australian should be highly concerned about these scenes and, and also people from around the world. You look at the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, and he loves to talk about things like human rights and democracy and is very quick to condemn human rights abuses in other countries. Yet the very... Prime Minister of Australia is completely ignoring the uh, very apparent abuse of power that's taking place uh, right right here on the streets of Melbourne. So why do you think Scott Morrison is not calling this out for what it is? You know, Scott Morrison has the internet. He's clearly seen the scenes. People getting smashed into the ground. Uh, elderly women pushed to the ground, sprayed in the face with, uh, with pepper spray. And of course, these scenes right here, shooting these, uh, quote, non-lethal pallets or whatever they are at people that are already dispersing and already running away. It's just an, it, it, it's, it's an absolute disgrace, but there are a few people who are speaking out about it in our country. Craig Kelly is one of them. So he's doing a great job calling it out, standing strong and doing what many of his colleagues don't have the backbone to do. And we'll be uh, having Craig Kelly back on the MCJ report really soon. So um, yeah, this is, this is basically it for this segment. Again, Victoria Police, just take a good hard look at it and take a good hard look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself if you're happy to participate in, in this type of assault against the people. Simple as that.